how to file for unemployment insurance when you are self-employed, an independent contractor, work for a nonprofit agency, are a gig economy worker, or part-time workers who do not have enough work history to be eligible for an Iowa unemployment claim. First, you would go to the website www.iowaworkforcedevelopment.gov. Once you reach that website, this is the home page. You can go here to the left under individual and click on the drop down arrow and then file unemployment. And over on the right hand side of that drop down menu, it says un apply, and that is found under the new claim section. So we'll click apply. Um, this page brings you to some important information uh, regarding the CARES Act benefits. So scroll down to about the middle of the page under file a claim for unemployment insurance benefits. It talks about some eligibility requirements for unemployment insurance benefits. And then there's a button to apply online now. Click there. Here you will be required to set up a username and password. If you have applied for unemployment benefits in the past, you may be able to enter your username and password from before. If not, we're going to click on the register new user button. Please note the red asterisk beside the line items, those are the required fields and those are required for you to continue to the next step in the process. First, it's going to require me to create a username. Use six to 20 letters and or numbers. Do not use special characters. To, tap, to go to the next field, just hit the tab button. Uh, the next item is a password. It must be six to 20 letters and or numbers. Do not use spaces or special characters. Tab to the next field and I have to confirm the password. The next item is first name, then middle initial. That's not required, but you can fill that in. The next field is last name, and that is a required field. The next item is email address. You can either choose to put one in or you don't have to, it's not required. We do send all of our notifications through regular US mail. Once I've completed this screen, click on register. This will bring you to the welcome screen. If you submit this claim today, your effective date is Sunday, March 29th, 2020. It tells you when your claim begins. It indicates that you will get a monetary record once the claim is processed. Um, once you've read this screen, click on the I accept to go to the application Again, there are red asterisks beside the fields that are required. So we're just going to fill in the required fields for now. Um, so it automatically put in the name, um, fills in the country, defaults to United States, but if that's different, you can change that. It's asking for the mailing address. The next field is the second line. 
So if you have a PO box and a street address, you can fill those in each on a separate line. Um, the city, then the state, there is a drop down menu. You can find that by clicking on the drop down arrow and the zip code. Uh, we also would like to know the local Iowa Work Center that is closest to your address. So that is a drop down menu and you can select the closest one. It would like a daytime phone number. Again, you would have the option to put in your email address. The next required field is the social security number. And you have to type it in twice to verify. Then it is asking for a date of birth. Have you moved out of Iowa since you last worked in Iowa? Yes or no? Select highest grade completed in school. Are you a citizen or national of the United States? If you answer no, it's going to ask you for your alien registration number and the expiration date. Ask gender. Hispanic or Latino, yes or no, and race. Those are not required fields, so you can choose to skip those. Once I've completed this first page, I will click Next. The next section is the payment method. How would you like to receive any benefit payments? It's a drop-down menu. We have three options. You can either choose a state-issued debit card, a checking account, or a savings account. Um, the checking and savings would be an account that you already have established. If you choose a debit card, it gives you a picture of what that looks like. Those debit cards are administered by Bank of America and it lists their customer service number for any issues that you might have with the card. If you select checking or savings, it will give you a new menu that asks you to put in your, uh, the name of your bank or financial institution. The branch where you bank. The city where your financial institution is located. The state of the financial institution. and the zip code. Then it is going to ask you for the nine digit routing, bank routing number. You will need to enter that twice to confirm that your entry is correct. Um, then it asks for the account number and you must enter that twice as well. Also on this page, we have included a picture of a check to show you where the routing number and account number can be found on your checks. Once you have completed that section, you can click the Next button. For this demonstration, we're just going to select Debit Card. And again, I will click Next to proceed to the next section. The next question is, did you work in any states or possessions other than Iowa since October 1st of 2018? If you answer yes, it will go on to ask you what states you worked in. If you answer no, you can proceed to the next section. When you've completed this section, click Next. The next section is in relation to military active duty status. So were you an active member of the U.S. military on active duty since October 1st of 2018? If you answer yes, we want to know some information 
that is found on your DD-214, such as your branch of service, your character of service, your entry date, your separation date, the days lost, the days accrued uh, of accrued leave. Um, are you a military retiree as of October 1st, 2018? Have you applied for or are you receiving from the Department of Veterans Affairs a subsistence allowance for vocational rehabilitation? Have you applied for or are you receiving from the Department of Veterans Affairs an educational assistance allowance under the War Orphans Educational Assistance? Have you had other employment since your military service ended on the separation date? These are all required fields if you have been on active duty status with the military since October 1st of 2018. If you answer no, the section is complete and we can click on next to move to the next section. The next section refers to work performed for the federal government as the federal government is your employer and that's who would pay your wages. So did you work for the federal government at any time since October 1st, 2018? If you answer yes, we are gonna to want to know some additional information about that federal employment, such as your position title, the federal agency name. Uh, you can put in the department within that federal agency the employment city, the employment country, the employment type, so whether it was full-time or intermittent or part-time, the date you began that employment, and the date that you last worked for the federal government. And then we also want to know, have you had other employment since your employment ended on the date you listed for the separation? Once you have completed this section, again, click the next button to move to the next tab. This is asking if you have filed for an unemployment benefits in the last 52 weeks. If you answer yes, we want to know what state you applied, filed, or received unemployment insurance benefits from. Once you've completed that, you can again click the next button. Tax withholding. So unemployment benefits are taxable income. If you choose not to have federal and state taxes withheld from your benefit payments, you will be responsible for paying all of the taxes on those benefits at the end of the calendar year. So we're asking, do you want to have federal tax withholding withheld from your unemployment benefits? If you answer yes, we will deduct 10% of the gross weekly benefit amount for federal taxes. Then do you want Iowa tax withholding withheld from your unemployment insurance benefits? If you answer yes, we will deduct 5% of your gross weekly benefit amount for state Iowa state taxes. Once you've completed the answer to those two questions, you can click next to move on. This is asking about dependents. So do you have a spouse, children, or other dependents? If you answer yes, we're going to ask you some additional questions. So do you have a spouse that earned $120 or less last week? Do not count earnings from spouse's self-employment. If you answer yes, then it's going to ask you if your spouse earned $120 or less last week, enter your spouse's name. So here you would enter your spouse's first and last name. Has your spouse filed an unemployment insurance claim within the past 12 months? Yes or no? If you answer yes, it will let you move on to the next question. 
So do you have dependents other than yourself or a spouse that you were able to claim on your federal tax return last year? If you answer yes, we are gonna to want to know the names of those dependents, first and last name. You can have a maximum of four. If you listed your spouse in the previous question, do not list them again. And also do not list yourself as a dependent. Once you've completed the fields, click Next. So, your most recent employer, was this work for the employer performed in Iowa? Yes or no? If you answer no, it is immediately going to take you to the employer's name, address, um, city, state, zip code, the phone number, the last job title that you held, Based on that job title, it will require you to select an ONET job title, and it will give you a selection to choose from. Please choose the best choice. Uh, select a reason for separation. So we have layoff, lack of work. Layoff, business closing permanently, so that means the business is going to be no longer in operation. Quit, discharge, if you are on a strike, or you're still working but you have reduced hours. Select one of those options. We would like to know the date that you first began working for this employer and the date that you last worked for this employer. And did you or will you receive vacation or separ severance pay on your last paycheck? If you answer yes, we are going to ask you the date that you were paid through. So if you're getting uh, two weeks of vacation, you're going to put the date uh, two weeks from your last day of work there. If you are self-employed um, or an independent contractor, you would list uh, if you're self-employed you're going to list your own name as the employer and then the city where you worked if you work for a nonprofit agency or you're a part-time worker you're going to list the name of the agency here. So for instance, um, United Way of Central Iowa. Then you're going to perform the search. There aren't any records found because I'm using myself, um, because I'm self-employed. So enter manually the information. So here I'm going to fill out the information with my own address. Again, this is, would be if you are self-employed or an con, uh, independent contractor. If you are an agency, you would list the agency name there and the address of the agency and all of the pertinent information related to that agency. your job title, and again, I need to select the corresponding ONET job title classification. This, based on the job title that I entered, this gives me some options to choose from. So I'm gonna select the best option. The reason for my layoff is I'm laid off. Put in the date that you began this employment.
and the last day that you worked for your employment. and if you will receive vacation or severance pay. Once you've completed that, click on the Next button. Please select the statement that best describes your employment status with your most recent employer. So for most of you, this will be the first one. You are filing due to a temporary layoff as a result of COVID-19 coronavirus or you have the option to select you are not likely to return to your most recent employer, you are on a temporary layoff or still working for your most recent employer, you refuse to bump a less senior employee, or you obtain work through a union hiring hall and you are a member in good standing. But for most of you that are applying as self-employed independent contractors or nonprofit agencies, it will most likely be the first option. Click the Next button. This tells you what your work search requirement is, that you do not have to look for work based on the option that we selected. You are not required to complete a full registration for job search assistance. If you're interested in the National Career Readiness Certificate, you can check this box. If you're interested in a registered apprenticeship, you can also check this box. Additional information about work search requirements is available in the Unemployment Insurance Benefits Handbook. Click Next. I certify under penalty of law. You need to select an option. I am a citizen or national of the United States or I am a refugee with permanent residency status in the United States, or I am an alien with employment authorized status issued by the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service, or I am not a citizen and am not claiming satisfactory immigration status. Once I've made my selection, you need to read this information, uh, the UI, the Unemployment Insurance Benefits Handbook will answer most questions about your claim for unemployment insurance and help you avoid problems, delays, or improper payments. It explains your rights and responsibilities while claiming unemployment insurance benefits. It is your responsibility to read and know the contents of this guide. This guide contains general information only and does not have the force and effect of law, rule, or regulation. By checking this box, I certify that I am responsible for reading and knowing the contents of the Unemployment Insurance Claimant Handbook, and it is my responsibility to access the handbook online or obtain a copy for my reference. An online copy is available here. You can click that and it will take you to that handbook. If you cannot access the online version, you may email UI Claims Help at iwd.iowa.gov or call UI Customer Service at 1-866-239-0843 to obtain a copy. I certify that I am totally or partially unemployed, able to work, and that I am hereby partially registered for work. I know that the law prescribes penalties for false statements made in connection with this claim. I certify that the statements I have made in this application are true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. I acknowledge the information I provide to Iowa Workforce Development may be requested and utilized for other governmental purposes, including, but not limited to, verification of eligibility under other government programs. I further certify that I will read the Unemployment Insurance Benefits Handbook and I will follow the instructions provided in that guide. If I have a question, I will contact Iowa Workforce Development. Click Next. For your protection, you are advised that the Iowa Department of Workforce Development utilizes data provided by LexisNexis Risk Solutions in order to help verify and validate your identity. Such data may include public records from federal, state, and local government sources and or non public data from government, utility, or education sources 
LexisNexis may also use limited information from credit reporting bureaus, but no credit check is conducted and no inquiry of any kind is incurred. By proceeding to the next step, you agree that IWD may use the LexisNexis Risk Solution product in order to ask you questions that will help verify your identity. You have the option to agree or not agree. If you do not agree to answer the questions provided, you will be required to submit documentation uh, to Iowa Workforce, either by fax or by email, to verify your identity, and no benefits on your claim can be paid until you have completed that process. So if you agree, it will try to create some information. Um, if there's not enough information in your history, it won't give you the option to answer those questions. So once you've completed the verification fields, click Next. This is where you will submit your claim for processing. It tells me that I'm applying for benefits on April 2nd, so the first week of my claim starts on Sunday, March 29th, 2020, and ends on Saturday, April 4th, 2020. That's the first week of the claim. You will be able to go online at this address to request payment for your first week on Sunday, April 5th, 2020. You will receive your confirmation number and weekly continued claim instructions after you click on the submit button below. Please review the below application before you submit. So this gives you a summary of how you answered all of the questions. Please review to make sure that is correct. If it is not correct, you can go back to the tab for any section that you need to change the information. If you have verified that everything is correct, click the submit button. Here, it gives you the claim confirmation number. If you get to this point, your claim has been successfully submitted. You do not need to call or email to verify that your claim has been received. This also tells that um, I must send in the appropriate Verification documents, there is a tab that you can click on to see the document options. So uh, it tells what is acceptable proof for identity and how to submit that. Um, it also it gives me instructions on the weekly continued claim. If you do not do your weekly continued claim, you will not be paid for benefits. So I need to start this on the Sunday after my claim has been successfully submitted. So that will be this Sunday, April 5th. The online uh, weekly claim application is available on Sunday from 8 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. or Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. When filing your weekly claim, you will answer the questions below. Are you employed or working reduced hours? Are you able and available for work? Have you refused any job offers or referrals? Are you actively looking for work? Are you reporting any pay or pension you may be receiving? When you make your continued claim online for the first time, you will be asked to enter a personal identification PIN number. Be sure to select a PIN that will be easy to remember since you must use the same PIN each time you go online to file your weekly claim. Do not use the same numbers in sequence, such as 1111 or 3333, or numbers in sequence, such as 1234. In some cases, you will need to select a new PIN the first time you go online to complete your continued claim after reactivating an existing claim. You can choose 
to print your application. I would recommend saving this confirmation number in case it is needed in the future. But once I'm done here, my claim has been submitted. Again, make sure you begin your weekly claim the Sunday after the week that your claim has been successfully submitted. Once you've submitted the claim, the claim application will be processed by Iowa Workforce Development. You will receive a green monetary statement telling you if you are eligible for state benefits. If you are not, your claim will be reviewed to see if you are eligible under the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. You will be notified if you are eligible for that program. And with that eligibility notice, you will receive instructions on how to provide uh, proof of income. That will be done online, and those instructions will be included with that eligibility letter that you receive. If you have questions, please contact our Unemployment Insurance Customer Service Line at 1-866-239-0843.